Hi everyone, Sahil from QuickNovity here and today in this video, we will see that how we can track whenever a new token pool is created on the Solana Radium Decentralized Exchange. So without any ado, let's jump into it. So the first thing what we will need to do is install the Solana Web3.js library. And once it's installed, let's open a code editor. Let's create a new file called index.js. And now let's paste the script, which we will use to track all the new pools created on Ethereum decentralized exchange. So this is how the script looks like. I have zoomed in a bit so that we can see it better. On the first line over here, what we are doing is importing the Solana Web3.js library. On the second line, we are saving the address of the radium liquidity pool v4 into this variable. On this line, we are generating a random hash to make sure that our request from HTTPS as well as the WebSocket endpoints reaches to one node. And over here, we have created a variable called credits and added value zero to it. So what this variable will be used for is to track the number of credits which we have used, the number of quick note credits which we have used after each output. Since this is a resource intensive operation, we will track the number of credits used after each output is received. And then over here, we are initializing or creating a variable called radium and then we are supplying the radium public key, which is this address and saying that it's the public key and then initializing the connection. And uh, over here, we will have to replace this HTTPS URL with our quick node Solana mainnet HTTPS URL. Let's copy it from here. Let's paste it here. And then this will re be replaced with the WebSocket URL. All right. And in the HTTP headers, we are sending the session hash, the random hash, which we created over here. And this is the main function. In main function, we are passing the connection and the program address, which is this radium address. And then we are printing a message called monitoring logs for program address, which will be this address. So we will print that. And then we are saying that whenever a log is obtained for that address, give us some information. And what we are doing is whenever a log is obtained or whenever there is a log, what we are doing is we are saying the script that if there is no error, return. And then if the logs contain this particular instruction called initialize to instruction, give us some message. So initialize two is the instruction which is used to create a new radium token pool. And if this particular instruction is found in the log, we will print the signature of the transaction where the log was found and then run the fetch radium accounts function. Now what fetch radium accounts method does is it first gets the past transaction where the initialized to instruction was found, it parses that transaction and increases the credit counter by 100 because each on logs match and each transaction parsing will require 50 50 credits each. So in total 100 credits. So each output will consume 100 credits, 100 quick note credits. And then in the accounts variable, what we are doing is we are finding the accounts or the input accounts of that particular program or program instruction. So where those will be stored is in the transaction object of the parsed transaction. Within that, there will be a message object and within that will be a instruction object. And in the instructions object will be the accounts object, which will have all the account information or the input accounts. And 
if the accounts are not found we will print no accounts are found and then return it and then what we are doing is saving the eighth index of the accounts object in token a index saving the ninth index of the accounts object in the token b index variables and then what we are doing is saving the accounts of that particular object on the eighth index in token a account variable saving the accounts of token b index which is over here in the token b account variable and then we are creating a new variable called display data which will display the account addresses of our tokens so the address of token a account we will convert it to base 58 then the address of token b account we will convert to base 58 as well and then we are printing a bunch of statements first we are saying that the liquidity pool is found new liquidity pool is found and then we are printing the explorer url which is generated using this function get explorer url so what we will do is we will print the sol scan url of that particular transaction where the initialized to instruction was found and then over here we are printing the display data which is this data on these two lines in a tabular format so we are doing console.table and then we are just printing the current credits the current number of credits which has been consumed and then calling the main function over here so now let's see how it looks like so let's run the script so now it's monitoring this particular address for any logs where this initialized to instruction is found so whenever that match is found we will get the output of the new pool which is created on the radium decentralized exchange so whenever a new match is found you will see a output something like this so you can see that we have printed the signature of the transaction we have printed the link to the salt scan explorer and this is the token pair we will look at it in salt scan explorer in a minute let's open this link so as you can see this was the transaction where a pool where of this token with the wrap solve was created let's also check out this address in the salt scan explorer let's open a new window tab out the window so the new token which was created is the highest 3.0 and this is the address of wrapped solana token if you want to look at it it's wrapped solana token and uh, this is the highest token so if we go back to the transaction click on this token you can see that it is indeed the highest token so that's how you can track all the new pools created on the radium decentralized exchange on the solana blockchain so if you learned anything from this video make sure to give it a thumbs up subscribe to the quicknode youtube channel and i'll see you in the next one Bye bye